hey guys welcome to my channel and welcome to day five of our fast i'm really excited guys i hope you guys have been doing well on it ensuring that you're drinking water ensuring that you are pacing yourself and remember a lot of times if you're fasting you know you don't want to be doing a whole lot of activities a whole lot of things it's a time that if you have the opportunity to just kind of rest do things slowly pace yourself because your body you know when it wants food and everything and you're trying to go full throttle with it it can, you know, cause you to be feeling sick or even get you aggravated and irritated. Um, but, you know, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Um, so, guys, I want to just talk with you all very briefly, if I will get it very briefly, about what the Lord has laid in my heart today to speak regarding our fast. We've covered a lot of things today as we, our fast is the theme for our fast is Revelation chapter 3, beginning at verse 8 through 12. And it's talking about let no one take your crown. And we've we've spoke about, we've touched on so many different topics and so many ways in which the enemy will try to come in, you know, through people, through poor judgment, you know, all these things, um, low self-esteem, not being able to accept the, the love from God, not being able to see yourself the way he sees you. It can make it very difficult and so if we have a hard time accepting god's love and his directives then you know it's going to cause a disconnect between us and god and very often we allow our self-image and what has been told to us in the past to really dictate um our relationship with the lord you know dictate the way we're going to receive or not receive or run away from god and today the lord wants me to talk with you all today about something that I'm going to talk about from Matthew chapter 13 and it's basically saying you will be rejected because of the crown because of the crown you're going to be rejected you know the crown is a reward the, 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 the crown is when we hear well done after all is said and done well done that good and faithful servant and a lot of times people get very excited about that you know, people get very excited when the word of God says in Matthew 6 and 33, to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else shall be added. But people will take away the righteousness part. Oh, seek ye first the kingdom and everything else will be added. Everybody wants the kingdom. They want everything added. But the righteousness part, you know, righteousness also will cause a rejection. And so that that is something that people shy away from. No one likes to feel that way. But for this crown, guys, you're going to be rejected. We're just not going to just going to be placed on our head and we haven't walked through the fires and we haven't walked through the flames and we have not been rejected and we have not been persecuted and we have not been reviled. These are things are going to happen, not because God just wants you to be hurt, but because there are people who are powered by darkness that's going to fight against you and I just because we're saved, just because we're serving God, just because we choose to do things God's way. So we're going to talk about this rejection, guys. And rejection is something that most people don't like and it doesn't feel well. But we're going to touch on this. And the Lord wants me to go to Matthew chapter 13. Now, I will encourage anybody to go and just read Matthew. You know, Matthew 13, read all of it. But there's some things I'm going to touch on today that I believe is going to be a blessing to you. Many people, they often lose their crown because they are afraid of rejection. Rejection is one of the biggest things that will cause someone to turn away from God, you know, and follow the crowd because it's easier to follow the crowd. It does not take much to be a sinner. To be a sinner is just so easy. You just do it, but it does take guts and gall to follow Christ. You know, being a believer of Christ is not for the weak. And even if we are weak, by the time God gets done helping us, we will be strong in him. But rejection is one of the things that will happen. And it's something that can keep many from losing their crown. They're afraid of rejection from man and people and those they love, so they will compromise. So Matthew chapter 13, I do read King James. I'm going to start in verse 1 and then I'm going to skip around. So in verse one, it says the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the seaside and great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and stood and the whole multitude stood on the shore. So this is a large amount of people, guys. There were so many people that, you know, he was out of his house. He went out of his house and he sat by the seaside and the crowd grew so much 
that he had to get into a ship and everybody and he stood as he was in the ship and and, and preaching and sharing and teaching them different things teaching them parables and they stood and listened and so I would encourage you to read about those parables that's going to be in the verses that's going to come. Um, so he's teaching the multitudes about the parables or teaching them parables and all these different things about the wheat and the tear and all this different, all these different things. That's just amazing, guys. So let's go down to verse 36. And it says there. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house and his disciples came unto him saying, declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. So the, G so the Jesus, so Jesus, he had given the parable of the wheat and the tares, right? And so they're asked, they asked him, the disciples, once the multitudes were sent home. He went back into the house with his disciples and they asked him, tell us, what is the meaning of the wheat and the tares? And so he begins to teach them. He begins to speak to them plainly, breaking it down. And it even talks about how he... He will teach them things. He had to speak to them in parables because they could not understand the things that he is saying. The, the multitudes cannot understand what he's speaking. He can only speak to them that way, but the Lord was able to take his disciples to the side and speak to them the deep things of God and give them the meanings of things, right? So in the meantime, he's giving them... Um, He's telling them what the parable of the wheat and the tares meant. Those things, guys, you're going to have to read it again on your own. But in verse 44, he's, he says here, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, which when a man has found it, he hides it and for joy thereof goes and selleth all that he has and buyeth that field. So again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. It is a great discovery, right? The which of which when a man has found, he hideth it. And for joy thereof, he goes and sell all that he has and buys that field. Okay, so he's telling them all these things about the joy of salvation. You know how you feel when you finally truly, truly discover God, not just when you become a Christian and now you feel like it's a burden, but the joy of having the Lord in your life and just you just want to serve him. You just want to read your word. You just want to do his will. That's what happened. It's a treasure that's hidden, but the Lord revealed it and showed it to us. Right. So he's talking to them about that. So think about this, guys. In verse 1, the Lord is teaching great multitudes. So many people. He, he's in this place. He's teaching. He, he's in the house. He went out. He is, he's teaching them the word. He sent the multitudes away. And now he's talking to his disciples. He's teaching them, you know, um, behind closed doors. And, and all this good stuff. He's telling them about the kingdom of heaven. He's telling them about the wheat of the tares. He's giving them so much knowledge. And then we see as we go further into, we go down into verse 53. We see now that Jesus is going now to his own hometown, which is in Nazareth. And it says, in 53, and it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, When has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? And here is what comes after that. Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? So 
When then has this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country and in his, home, and in his own house. And he did not many works there because of their unbelief. So he did not work any great miracles there. Let me read this to you in another version. Okay, so I'm going to reach to you in the Amplified from 53. So it says, When Jesus had finished these parables, he left there, and coming to his own country, which would be Nazareth, he taught in their synagogue, so that they were amazed and bewildered, so that they were amazed with bewildered, with bewildered wonder, and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these miraculous powers? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And do not all his sisters live here among us? Where then did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. So they were repelled and hindered from acknowledging his authority and caused to stumble. You see? But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his house. And he did not do many works of power there because of their unbelief. All right? And then I'm going to go up one where I read in verse... Um, Verse 44, the kingdom of heaven is like something precious buried in a field which a man found and hid again. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. When we truly discover God and that manifestation comes in our life, it don't matter huh? who comes, who goes. We just want God. And then everybody starts to think you're crazy and you're doing too much, but it doesn't matter. We have discovered something precious in Christ. So how does this message tie into what I'm saying? You will be rejected because of the crown. Well, let's talk about this. Jesus, in verse 1 of Matthew 13, preaches to the multitudes. There's people who are listening. He's preaching. He's teaching. He's teaching about the parables. He's teaching his disciples, you know, there are a variety of different people among the disciples. You have the tax collectors, you have the doctor, you have a lawyer. There are different people in this group, different personality types. And Jesus is teaching them. He's teaching them about the, the wheat and the tares and, and, and all this good stuff. He's doing miracles. He's moving under the power of the Holy Spirit. People are there receiving and coming to him in, in groves in, by the hundreds so much he has no place to sit on the seashore on the seashore. And despite all his wisdom and everything, when he gets to his hometown and he's teaching and he's sharing with them, they cannot receive. Why? They're too familiar with him. Is not this? The carpenter's son? Is not this the guy that we knew that used to run the streets? Is this not the girl that used to be the gossip and the troublemaker? Are you not from this family with this shady background? Did you not just get saved? You with all those tattoos on you? You who have all types of... You, you used to be... you. You left your wife and you left your husband and your kids are in jail and you twice divorced and, and you that you've done this and you fell into sin and you fell into fornication and your church got closed up and this happened and you were found to be in adultery and you were found to be a liar and a thief. You? No. Nah. You got a, a criminal record? No. You used to be in, into witchcraft? No. You telling me? You telling us? And that's pretty much what it was. They are familiar with Jesus. 
They think they are. So despite the fact that he was working miracles and they can see the evidence of the change in him, not change they power. were not going to receive from him because they're like, how can you tell us anything when you came from here? You grew up on this block. Your daddy's a carpenter. How dare you try to teach us? And because of that, Jesus was not able to do anything. He was not able to do any miracles, not because they hindered his power, but they were not in a position to receive. They were not willing to receive the word of God. So therefore, they're not going to see any miracles. You know, miracles without the word of God is nothing more than miracles without God's word reinforcing it is nothing more than a dog and pony show. It's just tricks. You just at the circus. You just at a magic show. But you will find that people will reject you because they don't want to accept the evidence of the new you in the way you're conducting yourself, the new, the change in your temperament, the way you're doing things, the way you're speaking, they are not going to receive from you sometimes. You could be saying something, they're not going to accept any word from you, any scripture. You go, you do on Facebook or you may post something and you have people that, people that don't know you that are being blessed by what you said. But the ones that do know you, they're the silent witnesses you know then that witness protection program what does that mean they just watching you but they're not saying anything and then sometimes they come up there to counter you because who do you think you are sometimes in your own house those closest to you will be the ones that are bringing you down. And sometimes they say that they're Christians too. What do you do when the, the, your mother or your father, your grandmother, they are like the, the well-known matriarch, patriarch in the church. And then God is leading you and they're saying, you need to sit down. Who do you think you are? I've been in this ministry. I've been doing this longer than you. Who do you think you are? You still wet behind the ears in salvation. You see, they feel like there's a chain of command. There's a hierarchy. There's a pyramid scheme in the church. That's what they want to set up. So people are not going to receive from you. You may lose your friends. You may lose those that you love. You may lose that man, that woman that you love for the cross. But the word of God said, he, he who has lost mother and father, brother, sister, husband, wife, lands and homes for my sake, shall receive a hundredfold and everlasting life. And so you have to think of the scripture that says, have you count the cost? Have you count the cost of being a believer? Your heart can't be pumping no Kool-Aid when you're doing this walk. You got to be willing to go all the way with Christ and people are going to reject you. They're going to reject you for the word's sake. Even though they're talking about what your, bra your, your background is, how you messed up, how you stumbled, what you did wrong, they will reject you for the gospel's sake. That's what it is, for his word's sake. They may say it's because you, you're a woman, you shouldn't be talking. They may say because you have a past, that's why we don't want to hear nothing from you. But at the end of it all, guys, you are being rejected for the word's sake. Don't be surprised. It shouldn't be like surprise when people are rejecting you. But doesn't it still feel like it? Because you don't want to be rejected. In verse 36, it said, Then Jesus sent the multitudes away and went into the house, and his disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. God has pulled you from the crowd and is willing to teach you one-on-one. -on -one. When you truly have, when you're truly been called out, you see, Jesus was teaching the multitudes, but he had to speak in parables. Why? Let me find that scripture for you. Hold up. All right. So in the same scripture, Matthew 13 and 10, it says, and the disciples came and said unto him, why, why do you speak in parables to them? 
And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not it is not given. So they're saying, Why do you speak in parables? Meaning, you know, when he says, like the wheat and the tares, and this the, the sower that sowed the seeds, and some fell on good ground, and some fell in, in the thorn bushes, when he gives about the wheat and the tares, and so the disciples came and said to him, why speakest thou unto parables, unto them in parables? And Jesus said, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is, it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. Hold on, let me skip over. 13 says, Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not so even though they have eyes to see they don't see and hearing they hear not neither do they understand and it says and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah which is Isaiah which saith by hearing you shall hear and shall not understand and seeing you shall see and not perceive for this people's heart is waxed gross it's evil and their hearts are dull of and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes are closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and i should heal them but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear people who reject you people who attack you and persecute you when you are doing the work of God it is because of the condition of their heart their heart is darkened they don't want to know so even though they're hearing you're saying the word of God to them they're not hearing they're seeing they're not seeing because they are blind by choice but it has been given to you to know the mysteries of God but not to them so in verse 36 after jesus finished talking to the multitudes he's given them the word but you know what they can't hear because their heart is not ready to hear they're hearing the word they may hear it, but some of them they're not ready to hear while some will have heard and they, they their lives was, was turned around there are others that they're just not listening they just came to church they just listened to this youtube video but they're not in a position to hear because of their heart. Their heart has waxed gross because it's filled with the word. Just as if you look in the early, if you read the scripture from the beginning, it talks about the sower, right? He sows the seed and some fell on good ground. Some gonna fall on the wayside. Some fall fell on stony ground. Some fell in the thorns and the thistles. Depending on if their heart is stony, depending on if they're, all they're caring about is the world. If all their, if, if it's on, you know, stony ground, which they're excited right now until troubles come. These are the things that the condition of their hearts that can cause them to not be able to understand. But when God sees he's, he's called you and then you are you are trying your best to just know him more and more. When we take one step, the Lord is going to take five towards us. Your heart will be, be opened up. And so what happens that even though you're in this group, you're in a multitude. God's going to pull you aside, just like he did with the disciples. In verse 36, then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. And what that means, the revelation that God gave me here is God has pulled you from the crowd, from the multitude. And he is willing to teach you one-on-one. -on -one. If you desire to learn, he will teach. And that's what's happening with many of you guys. You've been pulled away. You've been pulled away and he's teaching you and he's talking to you and he's, he's placing his word in you because you are in a position. He has opened up your, your mind so that you can now know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven and you may not feel that you are there right now, but the more you seek God, the more he's going to do it. I'm trying to tell you, there's no way I can sit here teaching you guys these things 
unless it's by the power of God. I was a bona fide party girl. I was a bona fide worldly girl. I was a bona fide carnal girl. How is it possible that I can teach like this? Only by the power of God. So that's what's going on, guys, with you all. God has pulled you aside from out of the multitude. And he's like, I'm going to break things down to you. I'm going to explain things to you. I'm going to open up your eyes so you can really see in your ears so you can hear because you are in a position to do so. But the rest who wants to live how they want to live and they want to fall back and how long they've been in ministry and, you know, they want to hold that, that stiff upper lip of religion and they want to follow this chain of command and say, you can't speak to me until you've gone through this and this and this. And they're mad because you just got say, but yet God put you at the front of the line. That don't make no sense to them. But God has called you. Listen, David came with to, to, to bring his brother some bread and some raisins and some refreshment on a cart. And God moved David from the carts with the raisins and the bread and the cheese and the loaves and put him up front in front of everybody. And he faced Goliath with just a sling in his hand. And that day, David was moved into the palace of Saul. And see, that's what God is doing in your life. And so what goes on, people are seeing the change in you. You may not be perfect, but you best believe they see a change in you, a change in how you're doing things, a change in how you're talking, how you're doing stuff. And they want to deny that change because even though they heard how the Lord was speaking and the wisdom by which he was speaking, they were like well they, uh, wait a minute ain't this so and so and that's what's going to happen you see when people see the change in you first they're going to be like oh you know they, they'll fall off after a while after i give them a month then three months come by i give them six months six months go by i mean i give them a year a year and a half go by now they have to start saying you know what he used to do this she used to do that ain't they th that person is this that person is that because number one People will rather get offended by the convictions of God or when they see the change in you, they'll rather get offended and get mad than to just yield and to change their heart and to humble themselves before God. But because you're the messenger, they want to kill the messenger. People will reject you because they're blind. People will reject you because they can't hear. Even though they have ears and they do not have hearing loss, even though they have eyes and they have no medical, uh, uh, no, no, uh, uh, there's no uh, official blindness. OK, but their heart and their condition, because they want to sin in the carnality of the world and by the powers of darkness, they will reject you the same way they rejected Jesus. What has happened to us, guys, when we really turn to the Lord is because according to verse 44 of the scripture, where it says that the kingdom of heaven is like something precious buried in a field, which a man found and hides again. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. We totally invest and we hold on to God. So what happens is in verse 44, when you make that discovery, nothing matters. Okay. Nothing matters once the treasure of Christ is discovered. And a lot of times people don't like that. They don't like how sold out you are. They don't like the change in you because the change in you brings conviction to them. The change in you would mean they have to, they, they start to, a light shines on them and they want to reject it. And so they have to, they have to, you know, they have to downplay you and they have to discredit you so they can feel better about themselves. You know, in John chapter 16, it tells us that what did Jesus say? It might be John 15, guys. Jesus says in John chapter 15 and 20, it says, Remember the word that I have told you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you. But 
they, if they had kept my sayings, they will keep yours. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sins. All right? So that's the problem. When you begin to speak the word of God and they begin to see the change in you, even though you're not even messing with them, but they see the change, it convicts them. When they see that you're not cursing and you're not drinking with them, everybody could be 15 people in the room, including you. 14 of them is drinking, but they're going to zero in on you, the one that's not drinking. Because in you choosing not to, it's like you, they feel conviction because the Holy Spirit resides in you, whether you know it or not. And so they, they get all upset. Oh, you can't drink. Well, why does it matter if I'm not drinking? Why does it matter if I'm not cursing? Because the powers of darkness have their crosshairs on you and they recognize Christ in you. So it could be about 25 people in the room and 24 of them is in there carrying on and having a good time. They're going to notice you because you're the light in the room. And so what happens, guys, people will get angry with you. They're going to get mad at you because of the change in you, because it pulls a cloak back on what they're doing. Even though you're not exposing them, the light of Christ in you and the light in your life bothers them. So you're going to be rejected because of that light. They want you to go blind again. They want you to stop hearing again. They want you to talk like them. They want you to act like them. And despite the transformative changes they will see in you, they are still going to be like, I don't care what kind of saved you say you are. You still the same old thief. You still that hoe from down the street as far as I'm concerned. And sometimes they try to say that to you. You just that old boy I knew. And sometimes even your family could be that way to you because your family know how you grew up and what you did. But I'm here to encourage you to hold fast and to stay strong because God told us already he already prepared us in in john 16 and one he says these things have i spoken unto you that you should not be offended they shall put you out of the synagogues yea the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think they're doing it doing god a service and these things will they do because they have not known the father nor me a lot of people you see there's a great multitude that a lot of people are saying god 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 and saying lord 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 and prophesying and doing all types of things but they don't know him because of the condition of their hearts so what's happening in these last days god is pulling those people aside just like when he sent the multitudes away and he went into the house and he began to teach those disciples one-on-one -on -one in a smaller group and breaking things down to them and that's what he's doing with you because you're willing to learn because you're not just in a crowd just at church you're not just a crowd just logging on you're not just, you're not pretending God has truly called you and he's revealed some things to you and he's working in your heart and you may not be perfect, but you desire him. And so what happens in the process, despite the light that is shining through you, people still want to say, ain't that old big head so-and-so. God said, they're going to do that to you because they did that to me. We're reading that they did that to him. But do not lose your crown. Trying to follow the multitude and trying to follow the majority. There's a lot of people who has lost their crown and lost their place because they got scared because I must be doing something wrong because everybody else is going in this direction. They told them to tone down. They told them they're being too deep and too spiritual. They told them they're being too holy. They need to chill. But I'm here to tell you the Lord says, take the time to read John chapter 17 where Jesus says, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. We are not in the world, but they are not of uh, we they are in the world but they are not of the world glory to god 16 john 16 john 17 and 16 says they are not of the world even as i am not of the world sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth Read all of John 17. This is going to be an encouragement to you or even listen to it on audio. 
you're going to be rejected because you're not of the world. If you were of the world, it would have accepted you. If you were of the world, it will accept you. I have given them thy word and the world hates them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. That's in John chapter 17 and 14. That's why you're being rejected. You need to hold fast. Hold fast to what you have. Let no one take your crown, my brothers and sisters. You're going to be rejected because of the crown. You're going to be rejected because of the light that is in you. But are you going to follow after man? Are you going to just give up and do what everybody else is doing? Are you going to give up and go and lay up and sleep around and, 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 and sow your royal oats and do what you want to do and lay with who you want to lay with? Because these things are the temporary glories and the temporary pleasures of this world. But de the devil would make sin so easy right now because he knows the ultimate price that you're going to pay in the end in eternity. The Lord is saying, hold fast. I know it's hard for you. I know it's hard for you. The Lord is leading me to read this to you guys. I know it's hard, but hold on. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 8, he says, I know thy works. Behold, I've set before thee an open door. And I'm going to go down. It says, for thou hast a little strength and thou hast kept my word and hast not denied my name. No matter how tired you've been, you have not denied my name. And he says, behold, I will make them of the, I will make them which are of the synagogue of Satan that say that they're Jews, that say that they're Christians, okay, and are not, who say that they're believers of Christ, who say that they're wheat and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Behold, Behold, hold fast. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. This is what we have to look forward to, my brothers and sisters. They reject you because of the crown. They reject you because they are lost. They reject you because they are powered by darkness. And that's what they got to do. Na, 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 boo, 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 boo. You are a Christian. You are a dummy. They got to do that to you. Why? So that you can start to feel bad and be like, maybe I should go and be over there. But they're on sinking sand. Hold fast. They rejected God. They beat God. We have not been nailed to no cross. We can go harder and we can go further for God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word of encouragement. I pray that my brothers and sisters in the Lord right now, God, they will hold fast. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for just powering us, oh God. We thank you for pouring out your spirit on us, Lord, so we can be quickened in our mortal body to continue to hold on. I pray that you'll bring comfort and peace to my brothers and sisters in the Lord who may feel rejected, who may feel reviled, who may feel tired, those who may even be tempted to want to give up and give in, who may want to tweak and adjust themselves and customize themselves to be more user-friendly, Lord, to be a one size fit all model but Lord that is not the case Lord Jesus I thank you for touching my brothers and sisters in the Lord from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet I pray Holy Spirit that you will touch their hearts I pray that you remove the fear the pain the heartache the rejection from them God that they will feel your perfect peace your word says you will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because we trust in you and Lord I thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper I thank you Holy Spirit that it's not by might nor by our power, but by your spirit. I thank you, oh God, that we will trust in your word. We will trust in the Lord in all our, with all our heart. We will not lean on our own understanding. In all our ways, we shall not acknowledge you and you shall direct our path. We thank you, oh God, that we shall not lose the fruits of the spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are teaching us and guiding us and bringing to our remembrance the things that's been said. We thank you, oh God, that we look at the bigger picture, Lord, not the temporary disappointments and hurts and pains 
that we discover right now. We thank you, oh God, that we will take on rejection boldly. And Father, we will stand fast, oh God, knowing we are not greater than you. You have been rejected. You have been reviled. And the world hates you. How can we expect the world to love us? We will not conform to the things of the world. We will not follow the remedies of the world. We will not follow the, the laws of the world, oh God. But we will follow you. We thank you that the word of God is bubbling up in us. God helping us to be strong. That out of our belly shall flow rivers of living waters. That you're creating in us a clean heart. You're renewing a right spirit within us. You are changing our minds, oh God. You're taking out all the dark and evil things out of us. You're taking out the rotting things out of us, oh God. You're taking out the stony parts of our hearts, Lord Jesus. Help us, help us, help us, help us, help us, oh God. Help my brothers and sisters in the Lord who are desiring to serve you in spirit and in truth. Empower us, oh God. Let us understand that you are with us and you're with us every step of the way. Lord, you're running right there next to us. That's why you told us to take your yoke upon you, upon us, and learn from you. You're running right next to us, oh God. You're encouraging us, oh God. You're telling us, come on, come on, come on, come on. Keep my pace, keep my pace. And Lord, you slow down for us. You pick us up when we cry. You pick us up when we buckle. You wait for us when we fall. You wipe our tears, oh Jesus. And Lord, you brush us off and say, let's keep going. Lord, you're disappointed with those who leave you. you. Lord, you turn around and look for those who leave you, God. And you're saddened in your heart when this happens. Oh God, I pray that you will help us, that we will make good on your investment in us, oh God. We will make good on you choosing us, oh God, through God's choice to tell you to choose us. Help us, oh God. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help us to serve you in spirit and in truth. Help us to love you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. Teach us how to love our neighbors as ourselves. Help us to have a face as a flint, oh God. Help us not to be afraid of their faces, Lord Jesus. Help us to boldly speak your words. And Father, help us not to be afraid even of death, Lord God. For to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Take away the traditions and the norms and the cultural norms and the habits that we have learned. Remove from us, oh God, the fears and the words of pains we may have heard through our lives. Take away from us, oh God, the social stigmas, oh God, that would like to, God, dictate to us what we can or cannot do. But God, bring us in a position to be open and be willing, oh God, to receive from you in abundance. Father, that we are here to labor, that we are sojourning on this world for a specific time. And God, at the appointed time, whether you return or whether you take us home, let us, God, hear well done. I thank you that my brothers and, the, and sisters in the Lord realize they are not alone. Let them not recoil and be disheartened by rejection. Let them understand where people are talking. It lines up with the word. Let us realize and remember when people turn away from us, it's because the scripture is fulfilled. Lord, there is nothing that we are encountering or will encounter that you have not laid in this word and said it shall be so and so we thank you father that we shall not fear man but we shall fear you we will not share fear man that can destroy the body but we'll fear you god that can destroy both body and soul in hell i thank you oh god for keeping us. I thank you that you're keeping my brothers and sisters in the Lord who are on this fast, those whose names are written here and those who are not. I pray that you will help them. I pray you will answer their prayer. I pray they'll get a special visitation from you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let them not go back. Let them not be plucked out of your hands. Let them not become discouraged, even in their sadness and fears, Lord. Let them lay hold on you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let them realize, oh God, that they just need to be still regardless of what they may feel God because you are going to be with us even unto the end father there is nothing in this world that we can experience that is going to trump hearing well done that's going to trump the new heaven and the new earth that shall come down from heaven onto this earth oh God let us hold on let my brothers and sisters hold on in the name of Jesus Christ I thank you for touching each and every one of them right now Lord I thank you for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon them in the name of Jesus. Remove every hindrance. Remove every stumbling block. Remove every trap and snare that's been set for them, oh God. We thank you for who you are, Lord Jesus. We thank you for a double portion of your Spirit upon us. 
Oh God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise right now. We thank you, oh God, that we will hear well done. We believe, we believe, we believe, oh God. That we shall have faces as lions, Lord Jesus. We shall be fearless, O oh God. As the children of Israel were fearless, O oh God. They, didn't, they were not afraid of anything. And Father, I thank you for putting that in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. I declare, oh God, peace. I declare, oh God, strength. I declare, oh God, courage. I declare a, a, a double portion, oh God, of your anointing, oh God, upon them. Quicken their mortal bodies in the mighty name of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for loving us and we love you. Let us truly understand what this means to love you. So we thank you, my God, for who you are. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, day five. Let's do this. Let's do this. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Remember, pace yourself. Keep a piece of candy in your mouth if you need it. Sip water. If you get shaky or anything, it's okay to have a piece of fruit or something to just stabilize you if you get stable, if you feel shaky or dizzy. And just pace yourself in your days. Don't don't overexert yourself. So whatever time you have allotted to the Lord, whether it's 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. or just a couple hours, do it as unto the Lord with a whole heart. He will honor that because he sees your heart. All right, guys, be blessed.